Hi, this is Pam, Pamela Gropi Art. Today we are going to paint these little jars. These are from the yogurts uh, from Yo Play, and they have them in the little yard, the little jars like this. And I just cleaned them up, took the labels off, and then I went in with a, a folk art enamel medium, and it's called frost medium and on this one I stroked it on and on this one I pounced it on with a little pouncer and I just wanted to see the effect it has now I did this because I know that painting over this is a little bit easier than painting on straight glass so if you're a beginner putting down a little bit of this frost medium or there's also another medium. I think there's a clear medium too. Um, helps your paint grip as you're stroking it. And uh, once you get a feel for it, you can go to the direct glass. Um, so let me get set up and then we'll paint a super simple little pattern that anyone can do so you can feel successful. A painting With painting on glass, I really prefer uh, the enamels. I like the finish. See, it says folk art enamel. That's what you would look for at a store. And it has the glass on top. But you can also use, and I will use today, the multi-surface. So it also has a glass on top so that you can use it on you can use it on glass. I just like the finish of the glass enamels. The multi-surface is more of a satin finish, but um, and it works fine. I just have a preference for the enamels on glass. And right now, uh, I wanted to use the the multi-surface so that, because a lot of my um, tutorials are done with the multi-surface and you would have them already. So you wouldn't have to go out and buy a specific paint for painting on glass if you didn't want to. But if you want to, I would recommend the, um, uh, the enamels for glass. So I'm just putting out a couple of the purples. I put out Violet Pansy and I put out perfect purple. They're two darker purples. You can see here is the perfect purple and that is the violet pansy. Just got my finger in it. I need a rag. Fingernail. Okay. And I will have thicket and well the thicket I'm going to have in enamel. I'm going to use and then the lighter green I will go ahead and use fresh foliage in the enamels. But uh, everything else will be probably the surface sorry so to start out with I'm going to use a smaller size scruffy these are the glass painting painting brushes you don't have to use these there's a lot of really good glass painters out there way better than me and they use just the regular one stroke brushes or paint brushes so I just have these for glass so that's what I'm going to use so I'm going to first pounce my little scruffy in the violet pansy and I'm just going to put down a base coat for this design. I'm going to plant, pant, paint, sorry not plant, some little violets, just little tiny ones in kind of like a little circle. So first I'm going to put on where I'm going to put them as a backdrop and then I'm going to turn this around being careful not to touch it and I'm going to go into some more and do it on this side. Just so it has one on each side. And you don't have to be perfect. You just kind of put in the size that you want your design to be. And then you'll let it dry. So you want it to dry all the way. Because if you try to paint on glass without the undercoat being completely dry, it will lift it up and ruin your painting. Also, I would say when you're going between colors, don't put your brush in water. Rinse it out with, or kind of swish it through flow medium, and then, and or clear medium, and wipe, pinch your brush out with a rag. So like this, I would pinch it out with the rag. Like this. I didn't put any medium in it yet because I don't have to clean this brush out to reuse unless I was changing a color and going on to another one. But I just pinched that out 
I got most of the Violet Pansy out, and now I'm going to go into Perfect Purple. It has a little bit different color, and I'm going to do the same over here. And just because with glass painting, I will set up uh, where I'll do a bunch of them. Now you see the difference in colors? What This one has more red in it. This one has it's more of a dark lavender, if you ask me. Now I do have dioxazine purple from when they had dioxazine purple in the um, enamels and I will show you how dark that is if I can find it here. Well, I'll find it and bring it out and I will show you that. Oh yeah, here it is. I don't know that they make this anymore in the enamels, but they are bringing it back in the multi-surface. Now dioxazine purple is really dark. Look how dark that is compared to these two. But it is a beautiful purple. And I could just put a little bit in there. You can see how dark that is. It's a beautiful deep purple. So that's all well and good. This side I'm going to go back into. This is my perfect purple. Still has a little bit of that dioxazine on it. But that's okay. So just get a little bit of a design in there. We'll put a little bit of dioxazine in there. And we will let that dry. So we're going to let those dry and then we'll come back and do our violets. So they're drying well. I'm just going to go ahead and put the leaves on while that's drying. Now I'm going to do this in kind of a circle. The violets just kind of piled on each other. And so I'm going to do some leaves just a little bit around the edge. And I'm just going to load a little bit of the dark green, which is thicket, and the light green, which is fresh foliage. These are both the enamels. And I'm just going to do some little simple little slider leaf strokes. Now try to press rather lightly so it's like you're frosting a cake. So the you're just laying the paint on there and that makes them a little bit more opaque and rather than pulling off the paint. I tend to have a heavy hand so I have to really think about it. And I'm just going to put leaves on little places around that I think I want some foliage and I can go over top of the purple as well and just keep reloading my brush. Hopefully I'm in the camera. Camera's way high so I need to pay attention. So let's see, I have to look at it and kind of decide. I don't have a definite you know, design in mind, just kind of a go with the flow. So there is some leaves. So I'm going to turn around to the other side and do some more leaves. Don't have to be exactly the same places, just kind of put some on where I think I want some. Make sure I reload frequently enough without getting too gloppy. Well, that was a terrible looking leaf, so I'm just going to go over there and fix it. So that's okay. You can go over it and fix them. Don't worry about being perfect. The leaves are just kind of an enhancement. They're not the main show. Okay, so there we have some more leaves on that one. And here we got some more. Nothing fancy. I'm, I'm putting these a little bit more over top of the purple. See how that works. That way some of the purple peeks out. I kind of like that too. Now what's great about these little things, little jars, I think it's called Wee, O-U-I, Wee yogurts. These are the, um, the miniatures. Here's, I'll show you the difference between the two sizes. This is the regular size and this is the minis, which these have these chocolate 
chips in them and a, a mousse, chocolate mousse that is just really delicious with the yogurt. So just keep adding your leaves around. Try to keep your fingers out of the other side where you put your other leaves. That's got a little bit of a glop on it, so I'm going to just kind of work your way around. I think I want one right there. Alrighty. Lots of leaves. You could also do some vines. Let's see if I could do it with this brush. I don't know if I have a good enough chisel edge on this, but we'll test it and see. So I just kind of, I'm, I'm putting my finger here for a little bit of balance and I will drag some little vine. That's not a great one because it's a little too thick. I'm trying to see if I have, oh, I do have a, a small liner see if I can get some of that. Now I'm going to put out some flow medium. Where did I set that? Flow medium. Now this is very, this is called flow medium. It's the enamels and it helps to water down the paint. See it's very very liquidy. See that? Very liquidy. And that's what I would rinse my brush in. See it kind of would get some in here and kind of do this, work it, and then pinch it out. Let me get my rag. And then pinch it out. And then work it in some more. And pinch it out. If I was changing colors. Now if I'm just going to go clean the brush and I'm not going to use this brush again, or if it's going to be long enough for it to dry before I use it again, I would just rinse it out. But that's how I would you know, clean it as best as I could to switch colors for, for using this brush. So, now let me see. Let me... I'm just testing it to see. I think that's dry enough. So I'm going to go into some of, you know what, I need some light lavender. These are enamels, but they all work well with the multi-surface, and I'm putting out some multi-surface on my little palette here. So let me make sure I'm in the camera. I wanted to get it a little closer for you, slightly closer. So I have the two purples on my palette. And I have the lavender. I'm going to the Violet Pansy and the Light Lavender, double loading the brush. This is the same brush I had the green in, but I cleaned it out with the Flow Medium. And then I'm just going to do these little stroke. It's like a backwards leaf, really. So I'm just going to pull these towards a point. You'll see that there. And you don't have to do two colors. You could do it just in the darker purple, which I'll just do just the violet pansy, and just start layering petals. Like you're going to do a full flower, but you don't finish it. You notice right there I went over top of that base of that leaf. And and then you can go into some of the lavender if you wish. And I still had some of the dark purple in my brush and it kind of made it streaky, which is, that's really pretty. And you just keep working around. I'm working on from the outside in. That green was a little wet still, so it drug it into it, but that's okay. It's all part of it. Flowers have green mixed in. Now I'm doing some whole flowers. These are a little bit bigger than I would normally do on the small of the surface. I would do them smaller usually with a smaller brush like uh, maybe this this size. But that gives you the idea of putting the petals there and it um, Looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go into that dioxazine purple, that super dark, and I'm going to use this smaller brush. See this? And I'm just going to put a few smaller ones in here, and it'll draw the eye to those. 
and I'm just going over top of those other flowers. If you want to put a little of the perfect purple with it, you can do that. Where was it? No, that was the violet pansy, sorry. So there you have some little posies. And if you wanted to put the centers in, if you want to put little dots in, I will wait till it's dry, and that way you're not picking up the purple again. So I'm going to go around to the other side, and I'm just going to go ahead with that little brush. I'm going to wipe out the dioxazine purple. Just wipe it out a little bit, and then I'm going to go into some of the perfect purple. Now another way you can do this, and sorry for switching gears again, I'm going to go back into the dioxazine purple, and I'm just going to come along the outside edge with the darker dioxazine purple. Now you could use the perfect purple for this if you can't find the dioxazine. Like I said, the plaid um, is coming out with the dioxazine again in the multi-surface. Hopefully it will be as dark as this one. Different brands, it's, they are a different intensity or a slightly different color. At least I have found that to be true because I found dioxazine purple in um, different brands and it's not this really beautiful deep, deep purple. Okay, so I kind of got some around the outside edge and I'm going to come in with the Violet Pansy, which is slightly lighter. I still have that dioxazine purple in my brush, so you're going to get some of that deep dark color too. And I'm just layering petals. I'm usually doing the one, two, three petals. And one, two, three. That one was a little off. But when you're just layering like this, you don't have to be perfect. Perfect. Oh, I got some lavender. So as, as we come in closer to the center, we can go a little bit lighter. Add a little lavender to your perfect purple, or your violet pansy, sorry. Keep calling it perfect purple. Now that light is kind of glaring. I hope you can see it because it's causing glare in my eyes, making it harder to see. But if I didn't have the light, you couldn't see it all, so it's a catch-22. So there you have another set of violets on there. Now, <clears throat> the darker ones are kind of indistinctive. When it dries, they will be a little bit more distinctive. But also when you come in and put your dots for the centers or where you think the center should be, it'll help those flowers to develop. Let me see, make sure it was in the camera. Okay, now I'm going to add a little accent kind of off, well, right there. I didn't mean to do that. But just kind of have a little bit of the darker purple and a lighter purple. And I'm just going to do a little streak out here and maybe, not a streak, a little petal. So it's kind of like a, a backwards leaf. That one I kind of did a frontwards leaf, but that's okay. It'll work. I'm not really worried about it. So I'm going to go into some flow medium. And then I'm going to go into the greens. Just going to get some of that on my liner brush. Make it nice and thin so it'll flow onto the surface. And I'll just add some little vines. Just I'll try to be light-handed and kind of connect it to that as best as I can. And trying to be a real light touch so it makes it nice and thin. And I'm not worried about connecting everything. I'm just giving a hint of something heading out there and some little spikes. Same here. Ooh, that's got a glop. More flow medium. And just kind of. And you could just pull little viney things if you want. Okay, I'm going to go into, with this brush, this is the same one I did the vines with, just the fresh foliage. Get a little bit on my tip. You can do this with white, you can do this with yellow, but I'm just going to do the fresh foliage and just put tiny little dots 
on where I think center should be and it makes those flowers pop. I don't want to get too dotty so I just be judicious and kind of look around at where I think it might need one to make it look more like a flower. And it looks like they might need one right there. It looks like two flowers, two petals come together and maybe one over here. And there you have it. You have little violet type flowers on your little glass jar. Now what I do with these, once they dry, is I put some sand in it and I got my finger in that little bud trying to do that. Um, I put some sand in it, some nice clean sand. You can get colored sand or whatever at the hobby store or just some clean play sand. And then I put the little tea lights. These are getting a little too heavy. My, I'm too far away from it really. But I've tried to keep it in the camera so you can see it. So just put your dots. And that's good. So there we have our pretty little jar that we can put our tea light in and then the light coming through the flowers is really pretty when it flickers. And so here we'll do this, I'll do the dots on this one. And that is how you paint these pretty violets on these little recycled glass jars to 